All right, so today's episode is going to show how to create a, a fixed eye in the end of your rope should you break it if you're left with, you know, an end, you had to cut it off or whatever. Uh, the first, and I'm going to do this with nothing but a tape measure, uh, some tape. Again, you can use masking tape, electrical tape, duct tape, whatever you have uh, to lock it. You can use some uh, dental floss, fishing wire, uh, if you don't have anything of that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to whip it using just some small nylon twine. Um, this is a fid. Uh, they're all sized differently for different sizes of rope. Uh, uh, this one right here is for 3 eighths. Uh, this one right here is for half inch. Uh, you can see the length. This is what they're talking about in the instructions when they say a fid. They're talking about the actual length. And for 3 eighths it's 7.8 inches. I always round up to 8 inches. And for 3 eighths, I just use it for measurement. I don't actually use it to, for the splicing, since the stuff you can just open right up and push the line in. But anyway, the first thing we do with the taper, uh, you'll need your marker. And I like to come up about an inch from the end of the line. And what you'll do is you'll mark a pair of strands, and I'll put it up to the camera. Then you skip a pair, mark them, skip a pair, mark. And you can see how that goes. You just mark a pair, skip a pair, mark a pair, skip a pair, mark a pair. And then what you do is you'll pull those out. And taper is very important. It uh, prevents a sudden change in line diameter where the berry ends in the standing part of the rope. Uh, so what you'll have after your taper is you'll have that you should have six strands sticking out and six strands left. Then you'll take your knife and you'll cut these off relatively close. They don't need to be super close. You don't want it so close that it that they suck back into the line. You can see my ceramic knife is getting a little dull. And then you'll take the very end, right here, and you'll cut that on a 45. So on the end, that's what you should have right there. And then you'll take some tape. Again, this is going to be your splicing tool, so you want to tape it up relatively tight. And this is just... Uh, well, it's also going to be a splicing tool, but it's also to keep everything from coming apart on you. And take the end, twist it nice and tight, and then I like to take, give myself a smooth cut right at the end of the line, just cut the tape off. Now, excuse me, from the end of your taper, where you cut the last section of strands out is where you're going to start your measurement. And for 3 eighths, one fit equals 8 inches rounded up. Samson suggests 3 fids for a plain fixed eye. Um, I found 2 is plenty. Uh, if you'll notice the the yo-yo video, the rope that I worked up for that, uh, I actually did one fit on that which was only 19 inches and 7 eighths and that held fine. Uh, Samson's three fids suggestion is one of those fids is the actual taper. Um, the consensus is that doing a taper like this is uh, more than enough. It's plenty sufficient. That's all you need to do. So we just need two fids, which is going to be 16 inches. So get your tape measure. And from where you stopped your taper there, you're going to measure 16 inches. And this is what you should have right here. 16 inches, you're going to make a mark at 16 inches. Then, at your mark, make your eye. You can make this as big or as small as you want. doesn't really matter. Um, that's usually sufficient. Then you're going to make another mark. second mark you made 
right here is where you're going to stick this in. Make sure that your line's not twisted. Just from this mark, run your hand up, make sure it's not twisted. Take this, open it up, get it started, and then just run it in. Just like in the other video, just push some open, push it over, grip tight, pull down. You can see I'm not using any tools. All you need is some tape, a knife, something to mark with. And you're going to do this until those two marks come back together, until your first mark, which is right here, meets up with your second mark. So let me see, I've still got a little ways to go. It's all right if you pull in a little too much because you can always pull it back out. So you can just keep pulling this back out to find your mark. There it is, right there. You see both of my marks right there. Now what we're going to do <coughs> is you can either take your fishing line or your dental floss in a needle and you need to lock stitch this because there's nothing holding this berry in. It's not like a locked Brummel where the line actually locks itself. So what you need to do is, and this doesn't need to be pretty, all it does is keep it from pulling out under no load or light loads. You need to come in, come in this way, come out, come over. You just need to, you need to go like this through the line, turn it 45 degrees and do it again the opposite direction just go through and cut it off. It can even be just one or two stitches. Um, I'm going to show you an easier way to do this because some people, not everybody's got a needle and something to put that in. I'm going to show you how to whip it. Um, preferably something nylon, uh, something that will stretch a little bit. This is just some camping line that I've got. What you want to do is you want to make a loop in the line like this lay that on top of the line so that the loop hangs down like that. You'll see the loop right down there on the end. Put your thumb on it right there. And you're going to take the longer part, leave the short part right here. The long part is what you're going to wrap around. And you want to work your way back down towards this loop right here doesn't need to be pretty right now. It'll get tightened up when you set it. And you want to go, the whipping should be about the thickness of a single strand of the 3 8 So that's, that's about all you need right there. Then you're going to take the long section, the end of the long section, and put it through that loop. Just like that. And then take this piece, and give that a tug, pull that tight. Then you want to you're going to want to pull this up so that where you just pulled this is about right in in the center of all those wraps, just like that. It'll go in. Then you just want to pull these both ends at the same time, and it'll snug that up, and it self locks, and that will keep this from pulling out. You see? Then you can just cut these ends off. You're done there. Then you want to finish your berry. Keep going a little bit longer. Give yourself some room so that it sucks it up. And here you can see that tracer that I was talking about. That's what that's what it'll happen on the inside of the line if you've got it in there. Just pull that off. And cut it. Undo your tape.
can, if you have a thimble, you can put it back in here. You just have to size your eye using the thimble. And then as you're burying the, t the, the line, stick your thimble in there and just pull it tight. Again, you want to lock it somehow or either whip it or use a lock stitch. Um, the whipping or the lock stitch doesn't add any integrity to the splice, doesn't make it stronger, doesn't make it weaker. Just prevents if you prevents it from being able to be pulled out. I uh, got the tape off. Just milk that down, and you've just created an eye in your line. This is just a temporary. I would suggest it, you can leave it like this. There's nothing wrong with this, um, but I would suggest uh, properly lock stitching this when you get the chance or doing a locked promo splice. Uh, there is a way to do this without needing to get to both ends of the line, but normally for a locked promo you got to have access to both ends of the line. Uh, doing it without is kind of is uh, a little confusing. I will do a video on that shortly, probably be the last one, but uh, there you go, there's your trail repair fixed eye.